It's often scary to do the counterintuitive thing. It's scary to go against the naive common sense that you have. It's scary to go against the herd. And it's scary to go against your own fear. Ignoring fear in itself produces fear. That's how sticky fear is. And it's scary to go against your sort of um, base biological instincts and programming. So it's not enough just to know about these counterintuitive moves. You also have to be able to execute the move. See? It's not enough, for example, to know that you should be facing your fear. You have to actually face your fear, which is a whole nother step. Now, most people don't even know that they have to face their fear in order to conquer their fear. Um, but even if you learn about it, that's still not enough. You got to go one step further. On all of these points, there's always a deeper step to go down. It's the one you're resisting. Hint, hint. So why is reality so counterintuitive? Well, it's a tricky question. The way that I explain it to myself is that reality is nonlinear. Which means that it tends to fold in on itself. It's got a lot of interconnected variables. And these variables end up sort of uh, folding in on themselves. The output from one system ends up being the input to another system. And this creates all sorts of chaotic and twisted dynamics. Which is why naively changing a system, which is nonlinear, often produces the opposite result. Systems often backfire. Which is why good intentions are not enough. You must also understand how these systems actually work, which is where systems thinking comes in. And if you want a, an understanding of what that means, go check out my episode, Intro to Systems Thinking, where I explain that in a lot of detail. And also, I have a whole subcategory on my book list with specifically books about systems thinking. Go check those out. Those are some very profound books that will move you up to stage yellow in Spiral Dynamics. So let's conclude by giving you my top five most counterintuitive moves in life. If you can manage to accomplish these, uh, you will live a remarkable, profound life that almost no human being ever lives, precisely because they never, it never occurs to them to do this. So number one is to pursue truths at all pursue truth at all costs, even at the cost of your survival and your self agenda. Very counterintuitive to do that. A lot of people tell themselves that they pursue truth, but they actually don't. They confuse the pursuit of truth with the pursuit of their self-agenda. And these are two almost polar opposite things. You need to separate these out. And to be able to pursue truth, even when your self-agenda is threatened in that process. Number two is to live selflessly. Commit your entire life to living selflessly for others and for the world and not just to satisfy your own little petty needs. Step number three is to love unconditionally. Don't limit your love to any one person or any one thing. Radiate love. Love the stuff that normally people would hate. Love that. Number four is to don't seek material pleasure. In other words, reject hedonism. Super counterintuitive. And number five is to die. Die while you're still alive. Face your own fear of death head on and experience what death really is. Which does not mean suicide. So no suicide. Don't physically harm yourself ever. Take good care of your body, but pursue death, face it, and find out what lies on the other side of death. That's possible to do, and if you do it, you will live an extraordinary life.